the malignant narcissism is a specific manifestation of narcissistic personality disorder that combines characteristics of narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, aggression, and sadistic um, tendencies, and paranoia. Narcissistic personality disorder for diagnosis, and we know it's much more than this. These are the general diagnostic um, basics, okay? Just because there's a lot to talk about with the other stuff. <laughs> Delusions of grandeur, okay? The ego is center to the person's um, existence. They believe that that ego is present, that the mask they put on is who they're presenting themselves to be, and it is greater than those around them, and, and you know, they even say things like that. Okay, so um, no empathy or very little empathy. We know that one. Belief in, believe that they are superior in every way to other people. They may have traits, parts of them are more covert and, 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 you know, there's different types of narcissists, but all in all, when it boils down to it, they believe there is some superiority in them toward other people. They take advantage of others for their own gain. They are envious. They need the need for attention, recognition, and admiration is higher than what seems reasonable. They have an extreme need for admiration, recognition, respect, things like that. Um, intense uh, feelings of self importance or intense manifestations or behaviors that show self importance. And I'm not talking about self love and self care, I'm talking about self-righteous importance that is, um, it, well, it's egotistical, right? Entitlement. Entitlement, everything is theirs, even you, right? And arrogant behaviors. So those are the, the main traits that if you look up a diagnostic for NPD, come up. Now, so a malignant narcissist has all those, like every other narcissist has, and then some. They also have features and characteristics of antisocial anti personality disorder. They're not going to have, one person may not have all of these traits to be malignant. In other words, they may lack some of one, one here and there, or they could look different because they could be more covert of a person, or they have learned behaviors to mask because we know they wear masks and they're always hiding and covering. So um, antisocial personality disorder main features, the primary features for di for this is a disdain for authority, uh, absolute rejection and disdain for authority. And that can be a lot of things. It can be actual authority, you know, a boss or a police officer or whatever. It can be, you know, like actual people who present authority within society, government, whatever. Who doesn't get mad at these things, right? So you say, okay, well, but it's more than that. It's anyone who presents themselves as superior to the other person in any way, even if it's their job to do so. Even if it is um, makes sense that there would be a hierarchy in some way. Does that make sense? They disdain having anyone have authority over them. So there's a pattern of deceit. Lies are huge. Um, deception, cheating, sneaking, um, stealing, that kind of thing, okay? Reckless and impulsive behavior, risky behavior, is another feature of antisocial personality disorder. Another one is difficulty in planning ahead. And that was an interesting one. I, 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 can, um, I can see where that would happen when you're covering up for a million lies. How do you plan for that? Because if you can't plan for how the lie is going to play out, how can you plan for that of that particular thing? Because what comes later is like a total opposite of that. But anyway, um, no remorse. So not only do they not have empathy, they show no remorse. So general hostility, aggressiveness, irritability, and agitation. Generally, their personalities, they're prickly. They're agitated. They are hostile. They have aggressiveness and disrespectful in their behaviors toward others. They have this irreverent indifference and arrogance and disrespect toward others in certain situations in particular, especially if there's authority or anything that's pushing against their antisocial behavior. The next thing is aggression. 
there tends to be a lot of aggression. Now, aggression is not one thing. Aggression doesn't mean they hit people. Yes, aggression can mean they hit people. Aggression can mean, you know, battery and assault and all of all of that. Um, it can mean physical violence toward another human being. It can also mean that they don't ever do that. And instead they maybe take their, their aggression out on property or they break things. I think it can even be passive aggressively aggressive. In other words, things just seem to get broken around them. And I don't know why they seems like they're trying to fix something, but everything's broken. I cannot tell you how many things that were supposed to be fixed were actually broken. Yeah. And I kind of wonder if it's on purpose, you know, um, it can be property. It can also be emotional aggression. And that can come across as extreme passive aggression too. Now, all narcissists have a level of emotional aggression, right? We know that that's part of the devalue. Um, so kind of goes without saying it's kind of mixed in, but it's uh, probably, I would say, if you're looking at someone and classifying it as malignant, it would be on a more extreme level that the aggression would come out or combined with everything else. It just is like more highly aggressive. Um, it can be a posturing dominance of aggression. The last piece of the malignant narcissist is sadism. They're sadists. They're sadistic. This is an important one, I think, with the malignant narcissism. I think it's probably more part of it than any of than the um, antisocial stuff. Even I think it's all mixed in, of course, because antisocial sadism is part of being antisocial. But in the in the no remorse part. Okay, so what's sadism? And sadist enjoys hurting other people. They enjoy hurting others. They enjoy hurting animals. They enjoy hurting. They like to hurt. Not only do they like to hurt, they enjoy watching pain. They like it. It makes them feel when they watch pain. It makes them feel something. It made him feel excited. Animal excitement. Excited. Okay. Sexual excitement from pain. Oh, yeah. They get off on the pain. They dig it, okay? Sexually excited from the pain, from watching other people in pain, not from having the pain on themselves. That would be masochistic, but sexual excitement from seeing or inflicting pain. They fantasize about um, hurting others, even if they don't act on it. So the fantasy is there even when they're not watching the pain and they're enjoying that fantasy. Um. They want to hurt others, even if they don't. They want to hurt others very aggressively, and back to the aggression, when they're irritated or angry. That can be emotional as well. Emotional sadism can is, I mean, all narcissists are kind of, all narcissistic people have the emotional, they like to give emotional pain because they need, they need that negative and the darker um, supply from us, right? They need to see that, oh, I have that power to hurt someone. This is about power. Enjoying humiliating people. This one actually is just like, <laughs> this is the most triggering part for me is this topic, okay? Aggression towards others. Aggression towards others, well, back to the aggression. Why is there aggression? Because they wanna see you in pain, all right? Um, they behave in controlling, domineering, and dominant ways, okay? Anyone who's known a sadist has known a sadist and they're all nodding in their heads right now with a little bit of a sick stomach. The reason I'm all agitated is I just realized, oh my God, that's exactly, this is all to me. This is my, this was my life. So, yeah. So well, what it's doing in me is it's making me feel extremely validated that, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, okay. Wasn't all in my head. I knew it wasn't, but you know, it really is, is so the paranoia, they're paranoid. Why are they paranoid? Oh, well, look at the list of stuff they're defending and covering up. Of course they're paranoid, right? But paranoia is a big piece of it. Um, no accountability. We know that no narcissist has accountability, but no accountability, envy, and um, egocentric and charming. Uh-huh. Okay. That's it for these malignant narcissists. That's what I got today for this. If you need anything regarding healing from narcissistic abuse, again, head over to queenbeing.com and check it out.
if you're here, you've probably already done that. Hit subscribe if you've not done so. Hit the thumbs up if you like this topic. Group coaching, if you need group coaching, check out the main description of every video. Group coaching is always available. You can start at any time. I take care. Bye-bye.